Well, as we were talking before, you know, you, you endured so much pain and uh, trial and tribulation with your beautiful daughter, Jenny, trying to keep her alive. Um, do you think that ultimately when she did succeed in her attempt to take her life and move herself to a higher spiritual plane, that she was relieved and was there any relief in it for you? Yes, I do. Uh, you know, Jenny, her whole life, she was never really very, very comfortable with being here. And uh, it, it, she used to squirm in my arms as a baby. And even at the age of 14 came to me and said that she had felt suicidal her whole life. She stood in front of the mirror and tried to uh, strangle herself when she was seven. And after four attempts and rehabs, she was definitely ready to go. And, and one of the big things is that she shouldn't have succeeded that day. The, the shower rail shouldn't have held her. If she broke her neck, that's an exact science. Uh, all sorts of things. So it, it, it really felt like a synergy. And I, I, I can see it in all that happens with, with, within Full Circle Rainbow and beyond, that she's in a place where she resonates and communicates better. Um, and, and for me, yes, it was a relief. It was a mixture. I was filled with anguish, but at the same time, I was so relieved that she was no longer able to hurt herself and no longer my responsibility because it was a heavy burden. Uh, at the same time, there was this dreadful missing as a mother. You know, science says energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only form into new versions of itself. So I was going, where is my daughter? She's energy. Where's her energy in a new version and form? And that's when I remembered that years before, when the kids were small, I had bought your book, The Afterlife Connection. And so much had resonated with me then before I even knew this was going to happen to me. And I just sat in that place going, I know things are going to come through. And of course they started coming through and coming through. And what most people don't know is this is a very special interview because our journey together has been going on for 10 years in that you endorsed Full Circle Rainbow 10 years ago by writing the preface because we both related so much to what had happened to your mum and, and Jenny. It was amazing. And you know, I think, I think for, for, for you with Jenny, it, it's so true because her pain was kind of lifelong. As you said, she could never get comfortable in her skin because she wasn't meant to stay in her skin. She did what she needed to do and she really kept really propelled you and compelled you to be her voice and her spokesperson because communicating was so difficult for her so yeah. you've carried on her language of living and loving and like you said um it was so hard to to uh, carry the responsibility the pain because there was no relief for that pain she she really knew that she she needed to go and that was her message of how does she move on and yet live on, which is the amazing thing about spirit and afterlife. That's what I experienced with my mom. And, you know, the, the knowledge that the last thing I ever thought I would do is write a book on afterlife. I mean, I'm psychoanalytically trained, a straight, straight down the road, psychotherapist, marriage and family therapist. And suddenly I was having this abundance of signs with my mother and felt that I had to share this with the world. My editor encouraged me. I was writing a book on sex at the time. Ah. So we can always deal with sex. You need to let people know that are in this kind of grief and, and pain, the, um, the watering well of, of spiritual abundance that is there for you, which is an elixir for your heart and your soul when you are so devastated by losing a loved one. And I, I mean, I truly believe that, like you were saying, there were there were no there was no way that you could put controls or parameters in place for Jenny because she wasn't supposed to have them. She was here to serve a purpose, and it was hard to know that purpose until she transitioned yeah. and moved on and and moved you into carrying on her message. And that's why Full Circle is such an extraordinary and perfect title because 
she went full circle. And then, you know, like when you pass the, the ball and you go, all right, you're in, you're yeah. in the game now. You've continued to go full circle with her and we are full circle today. Yeah. Yes, so, so agree. It, it, it's definitely, I, I see it. I'm now living my life purpose because she left the planet. And I, I knew I was still to find it. And I found it through her. And the subtle ways things come through. I mean, Full Circle Rainbow has helped so many people in these 10 years uh, through grief and uh, creating a new belief system. Uh, that would be missing and and the whole epiphany process that has been born from this has helped people so much and if she was still around I, I I'm almost certain as a family would have been spending our whole time trying to keep her alive that would have been our mission yeah, of course and the thing is is that it would have been your mission and it would have been one um, underscored by so much frustration and despondence because that she was not supposed to be here beyond the time that she was and she mustered up tremendous courage and resilience because of all the love that you and the family gave her to stay as long as she could under the, the, the living a life of real um, distress and discomfort and despondence and pain. I think the fact that she managed, survived to 16 years old when she was fraught with the desire to, to transition from when she was seven is really testimony to how much love you gave her and how much energy you invested in keeping her here. Mm -hmm. And I think what stayed here has been her heart and her soul and she she came in a physical form she did what she needed to do which was give you the words and the message and the emotional understanding to be um, a change and a heal a changer and a healer and to help people who are struggling with those who are in so much pain and and despair that that living ha has no meaning for them in the way that it does for those of us who find meaning in life. When, when you've lost the meaning of life, when it's all about suffering, it, it's hard for people to wrap their heads around, you know, well, just get with it. And particularly because your daughter was so um, exceptional and gifted that she was loved and had the whole profile and personality of I'm living a full robust life. When in truth, it sounds like there was a disconnect from her, for her with her spiritual self and her physical self from when she showed up, yeah. from what you were describing. She was not comfortable in her own skin. She was not able to um, get comfortable. She was not able to get in her own shoes and find her place and space yeah. in life. She even would say, uh, I always, I always have felt like I didn't belong to this family and that I had got swapped in the hospital because it, I just didn't feel like I belonged here. So See, I, think, I think she was talking on a much more profound metaphorical sense that she was not talking about your family. She was talking about the family of earth that yeah. she really belonged on the spiritual plane and what is she doing here <laughs> and that's how she prevailed for so long which is which is remarkable it, is. it really is yeah uh, and the the thing is that now all this time later with all the signs especially the numbers the numbers she really really deeply with and I haven't shared this with many people because nine and seven are the numbers that come through for other people from her but when it's something profound for me and her I get fives everywhere I have to stop if I get five 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 it means I'm traveling very soon and these things only started happening after Jenny Jenny left so 
it, it, it's been the most amazing new way to fine tune how you hear and listen, how you, how you sense, how you interpret, uh, everything. how you process. Everything. It's everything. Like, yeah, you, you become it's, more fine tuned. I, I liken it to two way transmitting and receiving radio where you, you come on the station when you lose a loved one and you do this. It's amazing. In my, book, in my book, The Afterlife Connection, a therapist reveals how to communicate with departed loved ones. I call it transcommunication yeah. because it's on a whole yes. other level. And once you start to transcommunicate with a loved one, because the signs are so profound and um, extraordinary and hard to believe, you know, again, the, the people, everyone who talks to me about spirit says, I know this sounds crazy, but, or they say to me, oh, I got the chills. But the truth is, is that the signs are so remarkable that once you start to tune in and get on the channel and transcommunicate numbers, they speak to you in numbers if you learn how to read them. They speak to you in colors, the rainbows. They speak to you in nature. They infuse their energy. It's not like suddenly there's a butterfly that's your mother or your father or your daughter or your husband. It's their energy goes into that butterfly so that you are drawn to it to let they want to let you know they're there absolutely and so they do it if you start to listen you'll communicate with music you'll communicate with smell you'll communicate with even the things that break people very often get annoyed or angry oh my car broke or the the air condition is not working once you understand oh that's probably your daughter telling you chill or, you know, it's probably your, your husband saying, um, wake up if the alarm is going off for, for no reason. Yeah. You know, the, the signs that people get are confounding. There's oh. no way to explain the and lights yet, going, it, you know, the bit, phone ringing. Go ahead. No, it's a bit of an oxymoron, though, because... It is confounding and it is wow. And it is wow, that gave me a chill. But when you start doing more of it, it's very ordinary. It's very well, much part you, of life. You, you expect it. To wit, I have written, my mother's gone 21 years. I have seven volumes of journals of all the signs that I get from her. I write them down because they wow me each and every time. And one of the things that I say to so many people is, it's, just, it's really important that you always maintain your sense of wonder at the wow and, um, and you know, just phenomenon of afterlife connection. Because even though, like you say, it becomes part of your day, every time it happens, uh, my socks are knocked off, I'm blown away, and my heart just flips. I'm like so happy that my mom will come in. We have a silly sign, which was, I find 11 cents. 11 is one of the numbers that I have. And it's ridiculous. I'll look down and all of a sudden I'm walking, walking, walking. I'll look down and there's a dime and a penny. It happens so many times that I started keeping track. In one year, it'll happen 48 times. In another year, 42 times. I find 11 cents all the time. And if you don't, respect and recognize and appreciate and say thank you all the time the conversation can can come to a slowdown yeah, but you have a sense of wonder and you can continue to talk with your loved ones thank god because jenny's message was to give you the voice and the experience to keep her voice alive and to keep her alive because her staying alive in the physical sense was more than she could bear. And so she knew, she left when she knew you had it, <laughs> you got it, and you would carry on the message. And then it was safe for her to leave. Yeah. And she, you know, she, she transferred. But how, the, how, how is this, uh, I mean, the reason why you and I are on this call today, having this chat is because in full circle rainbow her, her birth and death dates and birth year and death year and all those dates add up to sevens and nines 
And what I didn't realize until two years after she, she had died was that in actual fact, she died on World Mental Health Day. And that's why this is happening. And we've, we've, we've created Jenny's Day because it, it, it's just, it's like, this is meant to be the showcase to assist people to understand a more about what we're talking about, but also the, the mental wellness side as well and how to bring that into manageability if that's what it's about. Um, well, amazing. the side, the, the, the numbers when they add up like that are a signature of spirit saying, you, this, you cannot miss. This is clearly the message here. And so, you know, like all the angels are signing off on that. And that's the meant to be, you know, that is the whole meant to be in the, in the whole experience that you've been dealing with, that I've been dealing with, that we've become the messengers yeah, so uh, and are, and are bringing and keeping the message alive, not just keeping our loved ones alive, but keeping the message alive so that others who are suffering and, and, and going through the enormity of grief, you know, years ago, I, I was talking about grief and trying to, I did a, um, a show with a, a colleague of mine and a friend she impersonated George Burns and I was the therapist and we did it. We called it celebrity solutions. She was celebrity. I was solutions. And she turned to me as George Burns and she said, but Dr. Greer, how do I go on without Gracie? And I said to her, you know what, George, you don't get over it. You get on with it because you never get over it, but you do get on with it. Thank you so much. This was so precious and I'm glad we've managed to finally create this today and lots and lots of love looking forward to chatting again sometime in the future